Okay, welcome everyone to the Judiciary Committee. Uh, we have two agenda. My name is Carl Rhodes. I'm the chair of the committee. Uh, this Zoom meeting and YouTube live stream event will include two agendas, the 930 agenda, which is JDC on, uh, Judiciary only, and then a 10 o'clock ad agenda joint with uh, government operate the Government Operations Committee. Uh, the other members of the Judiciary Committee are uh, Vice Chair Kayla Kalole, Senators Ocasio, Gabbard, Lee, Kim, and Favela. Uh, some of whom are here already and the rest I'm expecting soon. As noted, this hearing is being live, streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate hearings and meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. If you're interested in seeing the testimony, the written testimony, you can go to legis the legislature's website, capital.hawaii.gov, capital.hawaii.gov, capital with an O. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end the hearing due to major technical difficulties, we'll reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on Tuesday, uh, February 15 at 9.55 a.m. And a public notice will be posted. For those who are testifying remotely today, thank you for taking your time to come and join us today. Uh, your audio and video will be muted until it's your turn to testify. We do have a two minute limit on oral testimony, although many times members have questions. So if you can hang around uh, until the end of the testifiers, um, that would be terrific. If there are temporary technical glitches, we may have to move on to somebody else, but we will try to get back to you if we can fix the problem uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, first up on our 930 agenda is SB 3252. This imposes a cap on the charge costs for the reproduction of certain government records, the ways reproduction costs for the first 100 pages if disclosures in the public's interest, ways the cost of duplication of government records in an electronic format. Uh, first up on 3252 is uh, Deputy Director Pat McCain for the Department of Transportation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Department of Transportation is in support of the bill and we will stand on our written testimony. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next up is Pua IU for Department of Land and Natural Resources. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chairs, members. Um, the department offered comments, especially in regard to the waivers for um, the the search and and um, the searching part of of the proposal. Uh, we'll stand on our written comments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Cheryl Kakazu, Park Director, Office of Information Practices. Uh, good morning, Chair and Committee members. This is Jennifer Brooks on behalf of Cheryl Kakazu, Park. Okay, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, OIP had comments on this measure um, addressing three aspects. First, on the proposed statutory cap for search, review, and segregation fees, which are currently OIP is required to set by rule without any kind of statutory cap or other specifics. Um, so we noted that long term, this is going to change the effect of these. They were originally intended to allow agencies to recapture a decent share of their actual costs, at least salary costs, for larger requests, smaller requests those it'll take less than a few hours of staff time, those already fall under the waiver. Um, short term, you know, there's not an immediate effect because our current rules, which were promulgated in 1999 and reflected salaries as of 1996 when a survey was done, um, those current rules are actually below this statutory cap. Uh, however, we have been in the process of trying to raise it to reflect inflation, and uh, we'd have to go to, back to the drawing board on that one because the raise to reflect inflation would actually be more than this cap would allow. Um, so over the long term, you know, it would prevent us from raising the rates to keep up with inflation, and it would become a smaller and smaller share. So it's just a policy call as we see it, whether you want this to be something where the agencies are supposed to be able to recoup you know, much of their salary costs for larger requests, or whether it's something where you want this to be something that government does for the public and basically subsidizes. Um, the other two on the public interest waiver changes, again, that's something OIP is currently required to set by rule. This would set statutory specifics on how it works. Uh, it would change it up. I'm not 
structure, whether you would have more or fewer people eligible, but it would change it up and we express some concerns about whether it's a good thing. And then uh, we'll stand on our written regarding the copy fees. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next to Sandy Ma or Kainoa uh, Kaume, Kaume, sorry, Kaumehe Eva Rego for Common Cause. Aloha, Mr. Chair. Uh, aloha, Vice Chair Kiokalale and members of the committee. Kainoa Kaumehe Eva Rego testifying on behalf of Common Cause Hawaii. Uh, Common Cause Hawaii testifies in support of this bill. Uh, you have our written testimony, but I did want to note that um, Common Cause Hawaii has received complaints from the public as to the exorbitant costs charged by agencies for producing documents, um, particularly in electronic format. Um, this bill will waive the cost of duplication of government records in an electronic format and will impose a cap. Um, and moreover, it'll waive fees when, the, when it's in service to the public interest. Uh, for these reasons, we support and hopefully it will increase government accountability and transparency and reduce the barriers and burdens to public participation in our government. Uh, Mahalo Nui Law for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Next up is uh, R. Brian Black, Executive Director for Civil Beat Law Center for the Public Interest. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Brian Black. I'm the uh, Executive Director for the Civil Beat Law Center for the Public Interest. Um, I, I just wanted to respond to a couple comments that I uh, saw in the uh, testimony. Um, one, the, the issue with respect to uh, primarily in the commercial interest issue and whether that is includes news media. I would note that OIP or the is, is the only agency that I'm aware of that has ever concluded that news media is acting primarily in the commercial interest. Um, federal uh, federal law uh, uses a, a similar standard and uh, DOJ concluded in 1987 that news media are not acting primarily in the commercial interest. And then the, the issue that has come up in some of the testimony about interfering with duties, I would note that um, this doesn't change the fact that nothing, nothing in here would change the fact that agencies can prioritize their duties over responding to public, uh, public records requests and instead do incremental disclosures on a monthly basis. Uh, those types of delays are the kind of thing that leads requesters to narrow their request. So even though, <clears throat> Uh, charges may not be obstacles, uh, agencies would still be able to encourage requesters to narrow their requests by saying, hey, if you're going to do a complex request like this, uh, it, it, it's going to take a lot of time. So um, you narrow it and we can get it to you sooner. Uh, if there are any questions, <laughs> I'll be available. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, we had some other testimony that did, did decide not to zoom in. Uh, Craig Harai, Director, Department of Budget and Finance with comments, uh, uh, Department of Human Resources with comments, Douglas Miller for League of Women Voters in support, Nancy Cook Lauer, All Hawaii News in support, Michael Phillips, Vice President for Big Island Press Club in support, uh, Thomas Williams, Executive Director for Employment Employer employees retirement system with comments, Joe Kent for Grassroot Institute of Hawaii with comments, Kathy Gogol in support and Ryan Ozawa in support. That's all the testimony we have on SB 3252. Members, questions? Uh, Senator Kasu, go ahead. Sure, um, I have a question for OIP. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same thing. Hi, thank you. So it's along the lines of um, what uh, um, what Civil Beat Boston have brought up, but my question is to clarify your testimony. Are you suggesting the removal of the language that applies to primary commercial interests uh, because it may remove news media representatives who have a commercial interest but still primarily serve a, a very important public interest? Um, is this is this correct? Yes, uh, our testimony had included uh, some a quote from our impact statement to our rules that set the public interest standard, uh, those same rules back in 1999. Um, and in that, OIP explained that the reason that we had gone with the standard we did, we had considered the inclusion of a not primarily for a commercial interest, but had decided not to 
um, because it seemed that it, it, news media, um, you, it, you know, and I, I recognize as Brian Black said that you, you have uh, um, the feds that say, well, we don't think it's a commercial interest, but um, the, you know, OIG at the time had looked at that recorded in the impact statement that there, the interpretation was that news media, in fact, is they're they're hiring those reporters for money. They're publishing those stories in order to sell radio ad time, to sell papers, to sell newspaper ad times. And so rather than be put in the position of trying to say, oh no, but that's completely different from something like Hawaii Reporter, where they're publishing information for money, but perhaps more directly selling the data. Um, it was framed in that way. If it's something where you folks wanted to include the not for commercial interest, but exclude news media, that is of course something that could be done by statute, you know, provided that the news media shall not be considered to have a primarily commercial interest. Um, I do have one more question, Chair, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. For, same for OIP. So um, on the note of um, <clears throat> quantifying direct, direct costs um, for a department or agency, so how would you quantify um, email a document that's requested because I'm thinking per page would be pretty meaning meaningless and time involved could vary greatly depending on the request right from minutes to days so how do we how do we quantify that that email uh, or electronic format um senator are you asking about the copy fees or about all fees search review and, and segregation and copy fees for a request yeah. for email yeah so all of it but where it's where it's electronic mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's something like a request for emails, then those are in electronic format to start with. So currently, search review and segregation would cover, you know, let's say it's something where you're asking for two years worth of emails on a fairly broad subject for 25 different people. Um, you, you, you can you can run searches for keywords, but it's still gonna be some time to even do that. And then to look through all those emails, that would be the review to see if there's anything falling under exceptions to disclosure. And if necessary, um, black that out electronically, that would be the segregation. So if the time that re was required was long enough that it exceeded the waiver amount, which is $30 automatically, $60 for public interest, which as we said in our testimony represents the automatic waiver is anywhere from one to three hours, depending on how much of it is search and how much is review and segregation. Um, so you would, it, for a large enough email request, you'd potentially have that. For a request just for a couple specific emails, you presumably that would be under the waiver. Um, copy charges, you wouldn't expect to have any copy charges for something like that because it would be completely in electronic form. The time when you get copy charges for some, when somebody asks for PDFs, that would be something where somebody's asking for records that aren't in electronic format. The agency has them, but they're like eight bound paper volumes that have to be, somebody has to stand at the Xerox machine and scan them one by one into PDFs. So that's where that issue comes from. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Uh, I have a couple uh, for, let's see, let's go with um, Mr. Black first, you're still there yet. So the, the phrase in the public interest, is, is, that a, uh, is that a Freedom of Information Act term of art? Yeah, there are, um, there, there is a, uh, uh, a waiver that's used in FOIA for public interest. They, FOIA is a little bit different because it's got um, a specific waiver for representatives of the news media. So the, mm -hmm. the public interest um, waiver that they have uh, is, art, is articulated. It, it's similar to the standard that OIP uses. Okay. So, all right. So then if, do, do, do we use, does, does Hawaii use uh, FOIA, is, are we similar enough to FOIA to use uh, case law from FOIA? For, for some things. <laughs> some things, okay. All right, I didn't, okay. Um, okay, Th thank you, Mr. Black. Can I have um, uh, Jennifer Brooks back up from OIP? Thanks. Um, so, I mean, this, this bill would change the standard, but there was a question raised about how it, how would who makes the decision about 
interpreting that standard, but we have a standard now that somebody's interpreting. So who's who interprets it now? Uh, the standard for public interest. For, uh, at, for anything, at, yeah. Yeah, so the way the statute is written, that actually is not something that ends up going before OIP for- um, So it's the, it's it's the, the agent. Yeah, it, it's agency. the agencies, which is part of why we originally wrote it to be relatively objective. Because if you look at the standard we have right now, there is no requirement to show that the information being requested would be you know, significantly of public interest, significantly improve public understanding. You just have to show that it relates to agency operations or activity. Right. But if, if we adopted a different standard like this where you had to determine whether it was in the public interest and um, and we wanted it so that the, the press was considered in the public interest, even the ones that are for profit, is, is that is that something, is, is it, does OIP give guidance to the agencies? You know, here's here's a standard form that you could use to try to deter to uh, determine whether it's in the public interest or not. Uh, well, Senator, we have guidance in the form of our rules, and we will give guidance in the sense that our attorney of the day service, you know, it is something we'll get asked about, and we'll explain what the standard is. Um, okay. We have a, we've written correspondence on this is what the standard is. What we don't end up doing is taking that as the subject for an appeal. If somebody says, I believe I should have gotten the public interest waiver and I didn't, uh, again, the way the statute is written as far as what are the issues that can be appealed to OIP, that's not technically no, one well, of the issues. Okay. Yeah. But, you're, but you're there to help the agencies figure out how to comply. Uh, we are indeed. I, I think the concern on that would be that if you have an agency saying, yeah, we understand the standard and we believe that this isn't going to significantly contribute to public understanding, um, it's not something where there would be an obvious avenue short of going to court for a requester who says, I disagree. I think it would. But that's the case now, right? As well. it, it, is, it is the case. Um, it's just, it's got, just a little bit years. more objective because it either relates to agency activities and operations or not. It's, it doesn't call for the value judgment of how important it is. And we have years of experience doing, doing it that way as well. That is true. Okay. Okay, uh, members, any other questions? All right, thanks very much for all the testifiers who are here. Let's go ahead and move on to the next bill, which is uh, SB 3226. This requires the Office of Elections to prepare a digital voter registration guide to be posted on its website and requires the Office of Elections to mail a notice with each ballot notifying voters that a voter information guide may be found on its website. Uh, first up on SB 3226 is uh, the Attorney General, Holly Shikata. Uh Good morning, uh, Chair and Committee Good members. Day. I'm Bruce Nakamura, Deputy Attorney General for Holly Shikara. Uh, the department has submitted comments and we appreciate the comments consideration and I'm available for any questions. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you. Next is Scott Nago, Chief Elections Officer, Chief Election Officer. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the office stands on its written testimony providing comments and will be available to answer any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. And uh, next we have uh, Sandy Ma or Kaino Kaumehe. I have to listen to your name again. Kaumehe Eva, is that right? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, thank Mr. you for Chair. humoring me. Go ahead. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Aloha, Mr. Chair, uh, Vice Chair Kiyokolo, and members of, of the committee. Kaino Kaumehe Eva again testifying on behalf of Common Cause Hawaii. Uh, we testify in support of this bill. Uh, we support creating voter information guides for a more informed and engaged public for the betterment of our representative democracy. Uh, as noted in our testimony, we believe that there are some elements that are necessary uh, to a successful guide that is trusted and useful to the public. Uh, one, that it be neutral and written in plain language. Two, that it be readily available to the public through more than one medium. Um, and three, that uh, it be translated to different languages for all of Hawaii citizens to access. Uh, with that, that concludes, that concludes my testimony. Mahalo nui for the yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is James Gashel for National Federation of the Blind of Hawaii. Good morning. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Senator Rhodes and members. Um, appreciate it. I just want to basically stand on our written testimony, highlighting the two amendments we're asking for. 
Um, hope you can get this language in, in the perfect world. Maybe they would be done anyway, um, but I think it's pretty simple to specify accessible formats. And if we're gonna mail a printed ballot or a printed uh, notice about the voter information guide, we should email an electronic notice to those of us who use electronic ballots. And I hope you can get that language in and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is Janet Mason, uh, League of Women Voters of Hawaii. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair. Members of the committee, the League strongly supports this bill. Uh, we note that the most important content of the such a guide, the candidate statements and explanation of the ballot uh, measure is, is specified, but we have additional suggestions for the content. There should be links to the uh, information about the candidate and the candidates committee that is already available on the Campaign Finance Commission website. Uh, there should be a pro-con analysis of the ballot measures, and certainly there should be a sample ballot. We um, recognize that production of a digital pamphlet is far less expensive than having a paper pamphlet, but uh, unfortunately, some people do not have access to the internet or choose not to uh, access the internet or cannot access the internet. And for these people, we have to make a paper ballot available. Otherwise, there's an unfair access problem. Thanks for the opportunity to testify. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Next is Craig Rye, Director, Department of Pope, uh, Budget and Finance with comments. Kat Brady for Community Alliance on Prisons and support. John Bickle, Americans for Democratic Action and support. Kirby Shaw, Executive Director for Disability and Communications Access Board with comments. That's all the testimony we have on SB 3226. Members, questions? Uh, Senator Casio, go ahead. Um, I have a quick question for Kainoa or Kirby, um, Senate as well, but Kainoa, if you're available, what would common cause, um, what are they, who do they think should write the candidate statements? Do you have any thoughts on that? Because I'm thinking, Office of Elections, um, the candidates themselves, it, it becomes problematic. Is there some other entity that would be neutral? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna have to discuss that with Sandy, Senator, but can I get back nope. to you on that? Yep, absolutely. Just, just um, putting it out there, I'm just thinking um, candidates, you know, we risk if candidates are allowed to write their own statements, it's um, perhaps risks turning into the voter information guide into some kind of campaigning and sloganing and such. So just kind of thinking of how to avoid this. Um, um, yeah, Janet, do you For have sure. any, um, any suggestion or? Well, one option might be uh, for the Office of Elections to provide a template that could be filled in by the candidate um, that would capture, hopefully, objective information, but still give the candidate a chance to identify them, what's unique about them. Uh, certainly, the Office of Election is still going to um, have to be the arbiter of what is objective. Thank you. I yield. Yes, sir. Thank you. Other questions, members? Let me just double check. No, surprisingly, I don't, considering the complexity of the issue. Let's go ahead and move on to SB 2113. This is the judiciary's budget. Uh, first up on the Judd Bud, as it's referred to, uh, is Tom Mick, Policy and Planning uh, Department Director for the Judiciary. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair K.O. Kaloli, and committee members. I am Tom Mick at the Judiciary Policy and Planning Department. Today, I would just like to briefly summarize our written testimony. Last year, realizing the budget situation the state was in and wanted to do our part and be respectful, <clears throat> we submitted a flat by any budget request. That is, we did not ask for any additional people, positions, or operating funds. This year, seeing the economy slowly improving, but still being aware of the pitfalls and risks that could derail us, we continued along somewhat similar lines with a very modest request for no new permanent positions and just $961,000 or just 0.6% of our current budget. 
Specifically, we are requesting funds for salary increases for justices and judges recommended by the Commission on Salaries in 2019, but deferred until 2023. And also funds for an interstate compact coordinator position, which was previously funded by the Pro Probation Services Special Fund, but that fund was eliminated by the legislature last year. And this position is very, very important and is responsible for monitoring all offenders entered into leaving Hawaii on parole or probation. Another request is for funding two ju judge positions in Hilo, for which the Santa leader funded in fiscal year 20 due to the uh, economy situation. These positions are integral to third circuit court operations and continued diversion of resources to pay for these positions could continue to lead to deferral of filing or filling other judicial and staff vacancies such as probation officers and court clerks. Our last operating request is funding for multi-factor authentication, which is an IT security enhancement that makes it more difficult for un unauthorized persons to access judiciary technology resources. Okay, thank, thank you very oh. much. Oh. Uh, next up is, let's see, Stanley Rorg uh, testifying for Hawaii County Bar Association. Uh, you're still muted. Am I still muted? Hang on. There you go. There you go. You're good. Okay. Good morning. Um, I'm appearing on behalf of the Hawaii County Bar Association. Uh, I've been practicing law in Hilo for quite a while. And uh, the Hawaii County Bar Association is very concerned about the, the, the lack of staff in the Third Circuit. Uh, we understand that this is statewide. Uh, I have tried to gather comments from around the Third Circuit and uh, we really appreciate you folks funding these uh, two judge slots in Hilo. And we also want to just bring to the committee's attention that uh, the lack of staff is drastic right now. We have approximately uh, 21 to 23 uh, open slots for the clerks all over the county, and in particular, uh, the uh, the circuit courts in Hilo and in Kona are are low on on their body count, and so we we don't want to be uh, cheesy and try to get more than the other circuits, but uh, we would uh, uh, welcome any further support, Mr. Chairman and committee members that the Judiciary uh, Committee and the uh, Senate Ways and Means can provide us to alleviate some of the crunch that we have because it's slowing down the judicial process very, very uh, uh, much at the present time. Uh, thank you for your time on this testimony. Thank you very much. Next is Rachel Figueroa, Executive Director for Volunteer Legal Services Hawaii. I'm sorry, before you start, Ms. Figueroa, um, Claire or Jesse, can you just let me know when uh, Senator Moriwaki gets here? We do have a 10 o'clock joint with the Government Operations Committee. So go ahead, Ms. Ms. Figueroa. Thank you. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the Committee on Judiciary. I'm the Executive Director of Volunteer Legal Services Hawaii, testifying in support of Senate Bill 2113. I respectfully request an amendment to the proposed Judiciary Supplemental Budget. Volunteer Legal Services. Hawaii requests that the purchase of services contract for general civil legal services be restored in the judiciary budget. Volunteer legal services, like other nonprofits, suffered a loss of funds during the pandemic. At the same time, the need for services increased. We respectfully request your passage of Senate Bill 2113 with amendments. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Members and everyone, uh, Senator Moriwaki is here for the 10 o'clock, so we're going to uh, recess this uh, this agenda and switch over to the 10 o'clock agenda, and I apologize for those who are waiting to testify still, but uh, we need to we need to do the joint committee with the uh, government operations. So, Senator Moriwaki, are you here? I'm sorry, so we're recess for the uh, 9.30 agenda.
Okay, welcome everyone to the joint uh, committee meeting between the Judiciary Committee and the Government Operations Committee. Uh, uh, Senator Mori Walkie is the chair of the Government Operations Committee. Uh, we've already introduced ourselves. Do you, would you care to introduce your members or? Uh, um, yes. Okay, I think we, we do have uh, Senator Del I'm Sharon Mori Walkie, chair of the Government Operations Committee. With us is Senator Dela Cruz, vice chair. And I see Senator Gabbard um, coming on uh, and uh, we'll wait for our other members, our, our Senator Chang and Favela. Okay, great. Um, for this agenda, we do still have a two minute time limit and I'll go ahead and start calling the testimony if that's okay with you, uh, Chair Mori Walker. Please, proceed, okay. thank you. First up on, I'm sorry, the first bill is SB 2670. Uh, this relates to the Hawaii it would establish the Hawaii State Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer Plus Commission and the Hawaii State Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer Plus Commission Trust Fund. Uh, first up on SB 2670 is Aaron Lau, Deputy Attorney General. Good morning. Good morning. I am Deputy Attorney General Aaron Lau. The Department of the Attorney General provided written comments and I am available for your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Michael Kaloyu Jr. for the Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Good morning. Happy Aloha Friday. This is Michael Galoyu Jr., Chair of the uh, Stonewall Caucus for the Democratic Party of Hawaii. We want to thank you for hearing this bill. This is a priority for the Stonewall Caucus. Um, as you have seen uh, with the creation of the Equality Caucus, there is so much left to be done for the, um, to ensure equality and justice for the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, so we encourage you, I know time is short, so I just want to leave it at that. And we want to thank you for hearing this bill. And we encourage you to pass it and establish this commission. Mahalo. Thank you. Next we have um, Leanne Abusigawa for the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission in support. Craig Harai, Director of Budget and Finance with comments. Sandy Ma for Common Cause with comments. Tracy Ryan for Harm Reduction Hawaii with comments. Joe Wilson for North Shore Koala Diversity Co collective in support. Trish Kajimura, Deputy Director, Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center in support. John Bickle uh, for the Ameri Americans for Democratic Action in support. Behavioral Health Administration for the Department of Health in support. Winston Welsh, President, Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce in support. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, six, like 16. 15 uh, individuals in support and one in opposition. Okay, members, questions for those who are, are here on the Zoom. Okay, just double check. Great, we will go ahead and move on to the next bill then, which is SB 2694. It's relating to state contracts, requires all principal departments of the state to use gender neutral terminology in all state contracts. First up on 2694 is Michael Galoyu Jr. Morning again. Aloha again, Michael Galoyu Jr., uh, Stonewall Caucus. Um, the caucus stands in full support of this bill. This is will put the state in alignment with the, when you all um, expanded gender markers for state IDs and driver's licenses. And we hope that someday you'll expand that for birth certificates. Um, so we encourage you to pass this bill because it is necessary and we should not be uh, putting genders in contracts that has nothing to do with the uh, actual um, to topic. So thank you for the opportunity to testify. We stand in full support of this bill. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next, we have Janelle Miller for the Department of Health and support. Carrie Ann Shirota for the ACLU of Hawaii and support. Trisha Kajimura, Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center and support. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 individuals all in support. Members, any questions for Mr. Galoyu? Okay, if not, um, uh, we discussed, uh, poss uh, Senator Mori Walkie and I have already discussed possible amendments. Are you okay to go straight to decision-making? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so on the first one, which is SB 2670, this would establish the Hawaii State Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer Plus Commission and a commission trust fund. The recommendation here is to pass with some amendments We'll go ahead and remove the trust fund language. We'll add a blank appropriation um, 
as may be necessary for fiscal 2022-23 for the Hawaii State Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer Plus Commission and to carry out the purposes of the act. So basically moving away from the uh, the trust, from the uh, special fund, the trust fund, it's the term of trust fund here, to the uh, just a general appropriation. And then it will go to Senator Donovan De La Cruz's committee and you can decide how you want to finance it if if you want to move the bill forward. Any other, uh, any questions or concerns on that recommendation? Well, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Member Passing. The vote sheet. Uh, Judiciary Committee members voting on SB 2670. The Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Gabbard. Aye. Senator Kim. Is excused, Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Favela. Senator Kim. Aye. Senator Favela. Senator Favela is excused. Recommendation to Senator Favela. Um, Senator Senator Favela, we're voting on SB 20, 2670 to create a Hawaii State Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer Plus Commission. Aye. Recommendation adopted, Chair. Thank you, Senator Morwaki. Uh, you're muted. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Government Operations Committee on Senate Bill 2670. Same recommendation to pass with amendments. The Chair votes aye. Vice Chair De La Cruz. Aye. Uh, Senator Chang. Aye. Senator Gabbard. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, the recommendation is passed, uh, adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2694. This requires all principal departments in the state to use gender neutral terminology in all state contracts. Recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Keokololi. Members passing unamended. Uh, noting the presence of all members of the Judiciary Committee, are there any no's or reservations? Seeing none, Chair, all members, uh, present all members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you, Chair Moriwaki. For Government Operations Committee on Senate Bill 2694, same recommendation to pass unamended, all five members being present, anyone in opposition, anyone with reservations, the recommendation is adopted. All right. Thank you very much, members of both thank committees. You. That concludes thank our members. business for the Joint Committee. We're adjourned. Uh, JDC members will go back into the uh, 9.30 agenda. Uh, we were on the judiciary budget. And we had just heard from... I'm sorry, Austin, do we need to do a countdown on that, or are we, we okay to go? We're still alive. Okay. Uh, we had just heard from Rachel Figueroa for the Volunteer Legal Services of Hawaii on SB 2113, which is the Judiciary Budget. Next up for that, our next testifier was Nalani Fujimura Kaina, Executive Director for Legal Aid Society. Good morning, um, okay. Chair and Vice Chair. Uh, Nalani Fujimori, kind Executive Director with the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii. Uh, just wanted to testify in support with recommendations um, for some amendments that is in my testimony. Happy to take any questions that the committee has. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Next is Craig Harai, Director of Department of Budget and Finance with comments. Shannon Sheldon, President of Hawaii State Bar Association in support. Uh, DJ Maria Iha, Section Chair for Hawaii State Bar Association Appellate Section and Support. Britt Barker, President for West Hawaii Bar Association Board and Support. Joseph D. Cardoza for Hawaii Access to Justice Commission and Support. And Michelle Oishi, President of Hawaii County Bar Association, also in support. Okay, members, uh, SB 2113, any questions? Uh, I have a question for Mr. Mick. So you, I, um, did you have further points to make? Well, I was just going to talk about our CIP request. That, Please know. go ahead. Okay. Uh, for bond funding, we are, we are requesting $12.1 million for six capital improvement program projects. Two deal with safety. Uh, two projects deal with uh, safety and security. 
of staff and the public at Kaumanu Holly, the first being replacement of the entire fire alarm system, which is obsolete, beyond repair, and non-compliant with fire codes. And the second being to upgrade and reconfigure the sheriff's station and take it out of public view, as well as address some other serious security deficiencies. For downtown Honolulu, we are requesting funding to replace the seriously de deteriorated roof and upgrade roof drainage of Kappa Iva building where the ICA is located. And to continue critical air conditioning replacement work on air conditioning equipment, which is some 35 to 45 years old at Aliolani Holly, which houses the Supreme Court. Our last two CIP requests of the construction of a new courtroom in the existing space at Hold Pili Holly on Maui, where we have nine judges for eight courtrooms. And for a new supplemental chiller at the 24 hour, seven day a week detention home in Kapolei to ensure essential after hours air conditioning and in case and to cover in case of extended power loss. In summary, the judiciary respectfully requests your support for a supplemental operating CIP budget request. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in this major and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, members, any other questions? Let me just double check. I don't either. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mick and the other testifiers who are here today. We appreciate it. We'll go ahead and move on to the last bill on the agenda, which is SB 801. This would provide that a law enforcement officer has a duty to intervene in the law enforcement if the law enforcement officer reasonably believes that another law enforcement officer is using or is about to use unnecessary excessive force on an arrestee. Uh, we have no Zoom testifiers today. Uh, Robert Cavaco, president of the State of Hawaii Organization of Police Officers, is opposed, or the organization is opposed. Alan Urasaki is in support. Dara Carlin is in support. And... Uh, Director Butai from the Department of Transportation is in support. And there's no one asking questions though. So that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, members, anyone want to go to a breakout room? Otherwise I'm prepared to make recommendations and we can vote. Okay, so go ahead and go into the uh, decision making part. Uh, first up is SB 3252. Uh, this the one that imposes a cap on the charge cost for reproduction of certain government records, waste production, reproduction costs for the first hundred pages if disclosures, if disclosures in the public's public's interest. Um, I have, I'd like to move it forward. I do have a couple of amendments, and it does it has a long and winding road after it leaves us, so there will be plenty of other uh, opportunities to testify on it. I'd like to amend the reproduction cost shall not be charged for producing electronic copies of records that the agency maintains in electric format, electronic format, um, or can be converted to electric format. But if you have to, if the requester asks for it in an electronic form and the agency has to actually PDF it to get it into an electronic form, then you would still have to pay for that. Um, in the committee record, report, I'd like to indicate that we're adopting what we believe to be a, a, a Freedom of Information Act standard, when, which allows for waivers for media, even if they are, even if they are commercial under the public interest waiver. So, the the idea would be that a public interest waiver would include media, uh, in general. I mean, I suppose there could be exceptions where it wouldn't be if, if the media was the, I don't know, uh, the Nazi Party's uh, press organ. Maybe that wouldn't count, but uh, in general, it would be in the in the public interest. And Leslie, is that it? Yes, Chair, that's it. Okay, thank you. Members, questions or concerns? All right, uh, let's go ahead and vote. Senator Kio Kaloli. Members voting on SB 3252, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair Rhodes? Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio? Aye. Senator Gabbard? Aye. Senator Kim? Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair recommendation adopted. All right. Thank you.
Uh, we'll move on to SB 3226. This requires the Office of Elections to prepare a digital voter registration guide to be posted on its website. It requires the Office of Elections to mail a notice with each ballot notifying voters that a voter information guide may be found on its website. Uh, the recommendation here is to move with a number of amendments. Um, First, I suggest we include the two amendments requested by the National Federation of the Blind, the first being that the digital voter guide be posted online in a screen reader accessible format like HTML in addition to a PDF. The second being that in addition to mailing the notice, the notice shall also be emailed to all voters with special needs who registered to receive electronic alternate format ballots. Uh, next, we amend to give an option for people to request a physical copy of the voter information guide from the Office of Elections. Uh, I would also amend so that instead of the Attorney General, County Corporation Councils draft the statements related to any proposed county charter amendments, county related initiatives, or county related referendum issues. Uh, we'll amend the effective date to January 1, 2023, and make it effective for the 2024 election. Uh, we'll put on a bad date, July 30, 20, 2075, to further discussion. And we'll take away the responsibility to write the candidate blurbs from the Office of Elections and give it to the candidates themselves, but we'll authorize the Office of Elections to uniformly limit the amount of space offered to candidates by the race that they're in. So presumably, well, I don't know which way that would cut. You, you might want to give more space to the smaller races because they aren't going to get as much publicity otherwise. But so maybe a longer blurb for governor and a shorter one for um, a member of the House of Representatives. Uh, and then we'll also add Alelo Hawaii to the language that the Office of Election would need to translate the statements and descriptions of CONAMs and ballot questions into. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 3226, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, are there any reservations or no votes? Seeing none, chair recommendation adopted. All right, thank you. Next up is SB 2113. It's appropriate supplemental funds for the judiciary for the fiscal biennium beginning July 1st, uh, 2022, I believe. And the uh, recommendation is to go ahead and move it. We have some amendments to suggest. Yeah, just a second, this is a long outline. It's a big bill. Okay, first I'd like to insert appropriations to support court-ordered guardian ad litem and attorneys at $100,000 for each category to be used system-wide and correspondingly cut five vacant positions budgeted for a total of 210810 from the bottom of the vacancy list. Uh, we'll add a proviso that allows allowing the judiciary to provide compensations to GALs and court appointed attorneys at a rate that is greater than the guidelines specified in current law. We'll insert a lump sum CIP of $3.12 million for judiciary, judiciary facilities statewide to cover necessary smaller projects identified by the judiciary, and we'll specify those projects in the committee report. There are also technical amendments. We'll note in the committee report that substantial budget reductions that judiciary has experienced uh, recently, they got uh, $23.7 million cut from fiscal years 20 to 21, and 192 vacant positions defunded, including 12 judges and eight per diem judges. And that's the recommended amendments. Questions or concerns? I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Kiyokaloli. Member SB 2113. The chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, I think we lost, Senator Kim, are you there? I see six members of the committee. Okay, with six members present, are there any no's or reservations? Okay, seeing none, chair, recommendation adopted. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the last bill, which is SB 20, 2801. This provides that a law enforcement officer has a duty to intervene if the law enforcement officer reasonably believes that another law enforcement officer is using or is about to use unnecessary or excessive force on an arrest. Well, the recommendation here is to pass with an amendment. I, I'd, I'd like to take out or is about to use uh, excessive force. I think it's, I believe in holding 
uh, law enforcement officers and members of the state legislature to a high standard, but I don't know, I think it would be very difficult, especially in an arresting situation to be able to anticipate what your fellow officers are going to do with any accuracy. So I'd like to remove those references. And other than that, uh, that's, that's it. Any questions or concerns? Okay, if not, uh, SB 2801 for the vote. Uh, members, the chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2801 with amendments. With six members present, are there any no's or reservations? Uh, yeah, including the presence of all members of the committee on SB 2801, are there any reservations or no votes? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye recommendation adoption. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for being I just here. I want to say time. sorry, my computer cut off on me, so I don't know what I missed, but that's okay. Uh, just one vote, the Judd Bud vote. I don't know what the, what's no the problem. rule? Okay, we, we won't worry about it then. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks everyone for being here and uh, have a good weekend. Hey, you too, bye. We're adjourned.